Well, what do you think? Let's go. Let's go fix blade today with Wee Knives, the stonefish. Got this in the mail. I'll go, oh, that was such a lovely gift. And then I found out it was part of the pass around group. I'm going, ah, whatever. There you go. The stonefish. Interesting. Yeah, 9.23 inches overall, 4.46 uh, blade, and a 4 millimeter thick CPM 20 CV. You know, stone wash finish. And this one is the tan G10. Looks solid, looks well made. Uh, we knives, you know, they do a heck of a job. And this looks like a just a, just a regular usable knife doesn't it uh as far as fixed blades go i mean you watch the hunting shows you see people field dress uh, their game and this and that this doesn't seem too far off of that kind of a usable blade you always think i always think of you know the bigger the better it's got to be like this is my wilderness explorer from bark river and it's it's a it's a pretty good sized knife it's fairly light though actually but check it out you know in comparison and you know i think of a good quality knife i think of bark river but hey cpm 20 cv I don't have a number on here, and I'm not at liberty to go punch a hole or punch a divot in it to check the rock well. This has got to go back, but uh, there you go. There's a difference in the in the length here between these two knives. Not like I got a billion fixed blades rolling around here, oh, but I have more than one or two. Here's my F1. No, I don't see this in the field dressing game. So, but this is actually CPM D2 had that tested. HRC was 63 and it did some cutting for Outpost 76. So check his channel out, but he did some cutting there. Then it blasted through the standard D2 range. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, this is all kinds of crazy, but much bigger knife, of course, than this. In common, they have that they're both made in China. Uh, this was like a $100 shooter. This is $250. But you can get it on White Mountain and, you know, 10% off is $25. Bucks, so uh, two and a quarter then. It's comfortable. The Ergos are good. Contoured G10. Reasonably good tactile here. Eh, kind of on the smoother side, not real aggressive. Full tang, you know, and you can go forward here and get a piece of paper. Maybe we could, oh, well, I got a little hasty there, didn't I? Got ahead of the, the cutting edge. Um, yeah, I mean, this has been, this has been around the group, so don't know what it's been through, but it's yeah, it's still pretty slicey. It's not bad. I'd I'd still consider it a pretty fair factory edge on there. Now that we've made a big damn mess. And, oh, by the way, you know, you see this sheath here? Well, see the one from my Reich knife? It's got that tech lock on the back. You push this and it opens up, etc. Well, this one's the same way. It just... I think for packing purposes, the previous guy in the group, I mean, there's your your, your couple of screws that get in there. And uh, so there you go. You know, like I showed you on the other one, push down, opens up, closes. So this would go, uh, let me see where I'd put this down. But on the, you know, on the inside here, however you want and, you know, attach it at that point. Comes in a box, pretty sturdy. There you go. That's what it says. Throw a tape on it. Mm, not quite four and a half inches, which is uh, ooh, about 103 millimeters overall, nine and a quarter at uh, about 23 and a half centimeters. Let's see what we got if we can get to our. Okay, we're at zero. Zero millimeters, 14 millimeters, 
0.55 that gives you a little bit and then 0.15 there at yeah basically four millimeter blade stock so they weren't lying about that let's throw it on the scale see what this thing weighs up to but you know the blade looks pretty usable for the field don't you think Eh, 183 grams. It's not a lightweight, but I mean, it's a fixed blade, so it's a little bit different. Uh, six and a half, six and a half ounces. Six and a half ounces of solid piece of CPM 20 CV. Jimp thumb ramp. Get up on here. You got good purchase on it. The ergos otherwise are good. Reverse grip is really good on this one, too. And you've got, this is very tactile here. You can you can get dig your thumb down into that. And, you know, usually a lot of times you're, you're, you're burying this in the palm of your hand. So it helps either way. Either way. You want to see my fancy new one? Or do you want to be Mr. Mr. Fancy Boy? <laughs> Don't laugh, man. I actually paid money for this. But actually, it's Turin, T-U-R-E-N, another Chinese. Hey, dude, if that's real M390, uh, then that little Snakewood Beauty was worth the 80 bucks I paid for it. And if it's not, I don't know. It depends on the HRC, what that rolls out to and what the real steel is. But if this is M390 at any kind of decent HRC... Uh, with that mosaic pin, well, that's 80 bucks all day long. I don't know if they said that's Python or it's Python faux Python, but it's real leather. A little fancy, maybe. That little ring of, I think that's just red micarta around there, but whatever. I just thought I'd throw, God only knows when I'll get to throwing this up on a real review. So, And since this is pass around, hey. We're talking fixed blades, nothing like playing around a little bit, having a little bit of fun. But yeah, for serious, oh yeah, this is all day serious. Should be really corrosion resistant with as much chromiums in here and uh, solid lockdown here. I imagine you can undo these and pull these scales off and maybe replace them. Or maybe you could dye these if you wanted to some other color. But they come, you know, it comes in a green, a black, and a tan. So pretty much get the colors you might want for a knife like this, the way it is. All right. Fit and finish is good. Guess what? No blade play, no lock rock. That's Joe. Okay. Take care. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. You know what we do around here. We like them knives, damn it. And the stonefish, it's a real knife. Stay sharp.